Adenomatoid Odontogenic Tumor by Trent Bauer and Weston Hafner. Adenomatoid Odontogenic Tumor, or AOT, is a rare, slow-growing benign tumor of odontogenic origin located in either the maxilla or the mandible, more commonly in the maxilla. The tumor is comprised of an overgrowth of odontogenic epithelium encased in connective tissue, thereby causing expansion of the bone. AOT is often called the two-thirds tumor. The tumor appears in the anterior maxilla, presents in younger females, is associated with an unerupted tooth, and most commonly involves the canine in two-thirds of all cases. Patients with AOT will generally be asymptomatic because the odontogenic epithelium is merely proliferating out of control. A few patients may complain of mild tenderness from palpation due to swelling impinging on the nerve endings. AOT is more common in women and is more often located in the anterior arch compared to the posterior arch and 90% of all cases occur before age 30. Although rare, AOT is highest in Africa at 1 to 39%. Clinical signs. The tumor presents as a smooth, firm, immobile swelling generally located at the site of a non-erupted permanent canine or adjacent missing teeth. The buccal vestibule appears distended yet the surface mucosa is not disfigured. The tumor is generally non-tender upon palpation and clinically demonstrates a straw-colored fluid upon aspiration. Facial disfiguration along with the associated edentulous area is the primary concern for care. Radiographic findings using the lesion acronym location located unilateral in the maxilla or mandible and more commonly in the anterior arch. Edge, well-defined sharp edge that is easily traceable. Shape, is usually ovoid to round. Internal structure, unilocular radiolucent center with a thin radiopaque boundary and radiopaque foci toward the middle. Other structures, Adjacent teeth are frequently displaced in a mesial or distal direction away from the tumor. Cortical bone is often displaced buccally or lingually and is usually thinned in the same manner. A tumor originating in the mandible will often displace the mandibular canal in a lingual direction. Number. Most always as a single entity. Size. Variable, but ranges from 2 to 7 centimeters. Differential interpretation. Once again, adenomatoid odontogenic tumor is a rare radiolucency involved with an impacted tooth or teeth. Radiopaque flakes inside the lesion will differentiate AOT from a dentigerous cyst. Likewise, attachment of the cyst to the cemento enamel junction will propose a dentitious cyst. Calcifying odontogenic cysts are differential for an AOT due to their slow-growing benign form. Like an AOT, the calcifying odontogenic cyst can also have a radiopaque spicule. However, calcifying odontogenic cysts have an equal prevalence in both jaws, unlike the AOT, which is seen more frequently in the maxilla. In some instances, a calcifying odontogenic cyst will have an ill-defined border, unlike an anomatoid odontogenic tumor. A dentigerous cyst is also a differential for an AOT due to its similarities in radiolucency and unilocular appearance. Both entities are associated with an impacted tooth. AOT can be differentiated from a dentigerous cyst by occasionally having fine spicules of calcification 
extending from the center of the radiolucency. And finally, an omeloblastic fibroodontoma should also be considered a differential for an AOT due to the scattered radiopacities seen throughout the tumor and the involvement of an impacted tooth. However, an ameloblastic fibroodontoma occurs more commonly in the posterior mandible while an, an adenomatoid odontogenic tumor occurs two-thirds of the time in the anterior maxilla. It should also be noted that the following differentials were listed in order of likelihood. Enucleation of the well-encapsulated lesion followed by a gentle curatage of the surrounding tissue allows for minimal mutilation of the surrounding tissue with no recurrence. An alternative treatment is marsupialization followed by orthodontic movement to preserve the tooth. However, if the lesion fails to decrease in size or it continues to grow, it must then be removed. The best professional referral for enucleation is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon, given the extensive nerves and blood vessels in that area, and an orthodontist for the movement of the tooth. Key points include characteristic clin clinical findings, uh, such as the unilateral, extraoral, and intraoral swelling, a hard bony feeling upon palpation, and the lesion often results in a malaligned dentition and missing teeth because of impaction. Characteristic radiographic findings, such as localized and unilateral to either the maxilla or mandible, well-defined edge, the entity is ovoid to round, is unilocular, has a radiolucent center with radiopaque foci and a thin radiopaque border, adjacent teeth are often displaced, the cortical bone is also displaced and thinned, in the buccal or lingual direction, and sometimes there's a displacement of the mandibular canal to the lingual, and it is 2 to 7 centimeters in diameter. And finally, enucleation, the removal of the tumor without cutting into it, followed by a curatage, is the best treatment option, resulting in no recurrence. And here are our resources. And we thank you for your time.